Another key concept to take note in domain 5 of the certified in cybersecurity is the concept of best practice security policies. So these are policies that help to implement best practices within the organization. And these practices uh, involve a, a, some sets of uh, activities. So some of the things on, involved on that best practice are data handling, password, acceptable use. So these are policies that guide uh, data handling, policies guiding password creation or use of password, basically talking about appropriate use of password, appropriate use of data, acceptable use, also talks about appropriate use, appropriate use of assets, devices, and data. So policies around these uh, elements or around these topics are security, are policies that can, are policies, there are security policies that are set up in place to help implement best practices within this area. The policy of bring your own device is the best practice security policies. And this is talking to the appropriate use of personal devices because many users within the organization today prefer to make use of their own personal devices within the organization. So these policies help to uh, set an appropriate use or standard for users to make use of their devices within the organization environment. Another common practice uh, security policy is privacy. So, Security policies around privacy helps to uh, help to implement appropriate protection of individuals' privacy. This talks to the things we can do or the how you how you handle uh, other people's data and even your own data within the organization. Another common uh, practice or security policy that I best that I implement best practice change management. So, in terms of how transition is made from one state to another state within the organization regardless of uh, which aspect of the organization, changes are implemented in a particular way. So security policies that implement best practice specifies how changes are implemented within the organization. So we go to examples of uh, password policies. So password policy is an example of a best practice policy. So each of these password policies or each of these best security policies can cater to different aspects of password. For example, we have password creation. So a security policy that is implementing best practice in terms of uh, password creation will have the following policies under it. So one of the policies could be like all users and admin password must be able, you know, must be at least of a certain length. So if you are creating a password within an organization, there is a policy that say that your password must be up to maybe 12 characters, must contain alphanumeric, it must you know, be this, it must be that. So these are policies that are guiding you know, password creation. Another example of such policies, password cannot be the same or similar with password that you are using on any other website or system. Password should not be single word or a commonly used phrase. Password uh, that are easy to get should be avoided, such as names and birthdays of your friends or family or private or your favorite band. These are things that you can avoid. Uh, Password policies guides against use of such. Then we talk about dictionary words and phrases should be avoided. Policy could specify that default installation password must be changed immediately after installation. This is a very common mistake many people make within organization. They buy a new device or they buy a new system and they retain the password that the uh, manufacturers put into the devices. So policies can be set to guide such errors from occurring. Another example of password policy uh, implementing best practice is password aging. And the, uh, is in the area of password aging, these password policies could include things like user password must be changed on a schedule that is established by the organization. Some organization will tell you every four weeks or every month. Some organization may say it's like every two months. So each organization will specify, uh, you will create a policy around how you change your aging password. Another uh, password policy here is that password that you've used previously may not be reused. Then system level password must also be changed according to a schedule established by the organization. Those, these are examples of policies catering to password aging. Another uh, policy area in password is password protection. So an example of policies, policies taking care of such is passwords must not, must not be shared with anyone. Passwords must not be revealed or sent electronically and do not write down your password. So IEC2 certified in cybersecurity in domain five takes time to explain or detail, 
you know, understanding of password policies. Other policies uh, that need to be, that could be considered are acceptable use policy procedures. So these are policies that talks about how to handle uh, data access, system access, disclosure of data is being handled, password again, data retention, how long do you keep data within your system, internet usage, how do you make use of internet, what, what kind of sites you should browse and which kind of sites you should not browse, then company device usage. So uh, these, are, these are acceptable use policies. Bring your own device policies, like I mentioned earlier, could specify the kind of you know cell phone. You could talk to your tablet, laptop, smartwatch, Bluetooth devices. All these ones are personal devices that, if you are bringing into the organization, there should be a policy to guide how you make use of such devices. And then we also have a privacy policy protection. And privacy policy protection, uh, uh, these are policies that speaks to things like personal information on personal identifiable information so it's such information like your name like your phone numbers you know some personal information such should be protected so these policies guide how you know such data are being handled also uh ephi which is uh, electronic protected health information these are information that needs to be taken care of, bank cards, information. All these are private information that policies within the organizations take care of such uh, information or such data on how you, it's, it's being made use of, made available within the organization. Then we have examples of laws and regulations that are enforcing privacy. privacy. Uh, examples are GDPR, which is General Data uh, Protection you know, Regulation, General Data Privacy uh, Regulation, which is common in Europe. We have the uh, PPEDA, which is Personal Information Protection and Electronic Documents. You know, these are these are uh, policy or laws and regulations ensuring that privacies of individuals within an organization or even uh, people outside the organization or uh, data about anyone relating to you or organization how they are being protected so another key concept we need to take note of is change management so in domain 5 of is to survive cyber security we also talk about change management so this concept of change management is saying that there must be a request for every change that is happening within the organization and then this request goes through various stages of development and test before it is released to end user. That means within an organization, a user or, a, or an individual cannot just decide that I want to change the web, web interface. I want to change the IP address of your of your server. You know, why do you want to do that? There must be a request. There must be a need. There must be something that is requesting for the change. And then when this request for change comes up, it must be gone, it must be passed through series of development and tests. So Within the uh, cyber certified in cyber security, or when when you are talking about security operations, which is domain five, you need to understand how change management occurs or how change management are being implemented. So we have change management practices. You know, so activities that happen within this uh, change management practices include things like documentation, documenting every change, are getting approval for the changes, and then rolling back. So if the changes that have been approved are not uh, performing or fulfilling the expectation, there should be a rollback. Another uh, concept here is change management policy. So when you're talking about change manage policy, management policy, the activities that these policies can take into consideration or take effect on uh, things like deciding to change. So there should be a policy that specifies when changes should be made. You know, when do you decide to make a change? How do you make the change? And then confirming that the change has been correctly correctly accomplished. So there are policies, uh, change management policies speak to these uh, activities or guide and ensures that the, these activities are performed to standard. So as a cybersecurity professional, uh, understanding security operations, which is domain five for certified in cybersecurity, you need to understand this concept very very well. Another key concept. Or understanding you need to take note of is security awareness training and how it introduces internal threats to organizations. So under this domain five, you also need to understand the importance of security awareness training and how organizations can make sure that uh, this security awareness training are conducted 
because of the impact it will have on the threats to the organization. So users within an organization needs to be aware of the kind of practices, of the kind of uh, attacks, the kind of uh, common, uh, you know, common things that are happening or the common trends with when you talk when you talk about cybersecurity attacks, these are things or companies that come together and you know put together into a training. So, as a cybersecurity professional, you need to understand the importance of security awareness training and how it can reduce threats. Another thing uh, concept here is the levels of security awareness. So, domain five of security operation talks about about three levels of uh, security awareness. We have the educational level. You know, this is where you actually get educated, you know, on the kind of security uh, situations that can happen or security uh, breaches that can happen. This is a proper education. Then we also have another level of awareness, which is training. This one can be specific. So training happens based on topics or organization. For example, if you are working within the financial sector, you can be trained on cybersecurity incidences that are related to finance. And if you are working within telecoms, you can be trained on uh, cybersecurity issues that are related to telecoms. So training can also be based on positions or individuals or based on topics. Then the, the other last level of security awareness is awareness. This is just a general understanding of what security or cybersecurity is about or is a kind of uh, security consciousness that is uh, applicable to everybody regardless of your position, regardless of your level of education, uh, regardless of uh, which organization you find yourself in. No, another concept that is very important for uh, cybersecurity professional according to Domain 5 is social engineering techniques. So if you are studying your cyber, for your certified in cybersecurity, you need to understand different techniques, uh, different social, engin social engineering techniques that are happening or that are out there. So uh, examples here are baiting technique, phone phishing, uh, or vishing technique. Then we have pretexting. So uh, we have uh, quid pro quo. We have the tailgating. We have false flag or false front operations. So baiting, you need to understand how baiting works, how uh, cyber hackers use a bait to lure you know, their targets into, you know, into being hacked. Phone phishing when you know uh, just uh, phishing taking place on phone or phishing. Phishing usually refers to maybe video when you are presented something that is not real. Maybe you are sent a website or an image or something that has a link behind it that will take you to a different destination other than what you have. Then we have pretexting, quid pro quo, tailgating, false flag. Tailgating is a very common physical. You know when someone is uh, trying to. Uh, follow you into accessing a physical barrier just by using your own uh, presence. So you need to understand these social engineering uh, techniques that people make use of within the cybersecurity field. As a cyber, uh, so security operations and domain five uh, of the certified in cybersecurity takes care of all these several concepts. So you need to go over these concepts over and over. Remember the previous video I shared some concepts in part one and this is part two. And also, so if you have read or if you have reviewed security operations, which is domain five or certified in cyber security, you should be able to do the following things. You'll be able to explain concept of security operation. You should be able to discuss data handling and best practices. You should be able to identify concept of logging and monitoring. You should be able to summarize the different types of encryption and their common uses. You should be able to describe the concept of configuration management. You should also be able to explain the application of common security policies. You should be able to discuss the importance of security awareness training. And you should be able to practice the terminology and review the concepts of network operations. So uh, as a certified in cybersecurity professional, you are preparing to be or take the exam. These objectives are the things you should be able to do after going through the domain five of the ISE 2 uh, curriculum.